always been kind of a gearhead, you know? Supercharged. Even before I could drive, I was always into cars. Although, just a bit different. So we just found this Mustang Cobra. How much horsepower is it rated? 305 stock. 305? See, the thing is, you guys look at me, you see the backwards hat, the uh, gray socks, the funky outfit, and you say, now this guy's a chump, am I right? No, fucking geek. A, a fucking like. geek. Oh, exactly. Like all right? Fucking... Fact is, I missed this shot, I'll walk away, I'm still a chump. One thing, man, just shoot. You go ahead and walk away, you. Oh, but you miss, and you've been beat, well, not once, but twice by a slow, white, geeky chump. <laughs> the American automotive enthusiast. Common adjectives used to describe them and their vehicles involve, among others, loud, flashy, and testosterone filled. For many enthusiasts, one's car is an extension of their personality. So unfortunately, when a bright orange Mustang with an obnoxious exhaust comes screaming by you for no apparent reason as you drive down the highway, it is safe to assume that the driver is extremely obnoxious and very concerned about making their presence known as a dominant force among others. Sadly, this is too often the case with automotive enthusiasts, and this same formula has become very tired and cliché. So what happens when a car enthusiast isn't worried about throwing themselves in everyone else's faces? What happens when they do not want to make their presence known to everyone around them? What if they instead enjoy being unsuspecting to the more common, loud car enthusiast, so that it is that much more satisfying to watch how silent they become after their supposedly awesome rocket ship gets beat by a car that appears to be nothing more than a common daily commuter? This is what defines a sleeper. My first car was a 92 Chevy Lumina Z34. Um, it wasn't that quick, at least I didn't think it was that quick, but Literally the first day I got my driver's license, I raced a middle-aged guy in a Camaro IROC Z. And I mean that's like an iconic muscle car and I'm you know in the car that my mother gave me is a Lumina. And I beat him. I couldn't believe it. So from day one I was hooked on the whole sleeper thing. My second car was a 95 Ford Taurus SHO. This car was a lot faster than my Z34 was. And it didn't look as sporty either. So it had taken this sleeper concept and just brought it to an entirely new level. When the show came out in 1989, it was as quick as the Corvette. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? really bad habit in the SHO of pulling up next to the Mustang drivers and asking them why Ford made their V6 family sedan faster than their V8 muscle car. And I mean, I, I got a lot of interesting responses, but if they were, uh, they were game to line up, the outcome was usually all the same. All right, now go on the third beat. Oh. Fuck that boat. 
The Z34 and the SHO were great. I mean, I had a ball with those cars. But, I mean, they were pretty limited in terms of how fast you could make them, especially on a budget. And being a student, my budget for modifying cars wasn't very high. So, in came my next car. And I can't make this up. My grandfather gave it to me. It's a 98 Buick Regal. This is the car that for 10 years was literally spent driving to church on Sundays. What set it apart from the Z34 and the show was not only was it uglier and less threatening, but it was also exponentially more easy to modify because it came supercharged. For about the cost of a wheel and tire package for most sports cars, I took the Regal's 240 horsepower and pretty much doubled it. After the modifications, the car was pretty fast. I mean, it was about on par with the new Corvette Grand Sport. Yet, when I'd pull up next to car enthusiasts in sports cars with half the horsepower of me, they would think I was joking when I asked them to race. And it, it always made my day when I was next to these guys and they were looking at me like, what the hell is this kid doing? I mean, he's in a Buick Regal. And if they actually got the chance to go with me, the what the hell is he doing quickly turned into what the hell just happened. Sometimes I get ripped on by other car enthusiasts for being different. So at a local forum get together, I had a chance to sort of prove myself on the dyno. Uh, the dyno is like uh, this roller that measures the power your car makes. Your car is strapped down and they floor it on the dyno and it'll spit out a horsepower reading. And I got a chance to run alongside cars like uh, the Pontiac GTO, Trans Am, and G8, Mustangs, Camaros, and even an $80,000 Benz. At the end of the day, the Regal made more power than any of those guys. I have to admit, <laughs> it felt good to see all those people with their running mouths turn red face and silent. 